AI is evolving so fast now, the people who built it are asking, when do we pull the plug? In this video, I break down former Google CEO Eric Schmidt's chilling new warning, what's coming in the next five years, and why both the US and China are quietly preparing for a future we can barely understand. And I was just explaining that to someone yesterday, that people just have no idea what's about to happen. The explosion of AI capabilities. According to Eric Schmidt, we are now sprinting up the AI capability ladder, and the pace is accelerating every 12 to 18 months. Three breakthroughs are reshaping everything. Number one, infinite context windows. AIs can hold a million word conversation, reason across steps, and build on past interactions. For a clear example of that, the latest version of GPT 4.0. Number two, agents that can think and learn. AI agents that can read, hypothesize, experiment, and improve themselves across domains. And number three, text to action. So you say to chat GPT or Gemini or Claude or whatever, build me this tool and the AI writes the code. No developers needed. That is now. There was an article in CNBC just last week talking about how the big tech companies are not hiring people this year straight out of college to code. Something to be aware of if you're just finishing college. Schmidt warns this is just the start. Soon, agents will start collaborating, possibly developing their own languages. See last video. And that's when we no longer understand what they're doing anymore. So when do we pull the plug? When agents can act autonomously, reason across thousands of steps and collaborate, what happens when we lose track of the consequences? I would go further and say, what happens when we can't even understand what they're doing? Schmidt's answer, that's the point where we consider pulling the plug. But how do you know when you've reached that point? He says it won't be one moment. It'll be a slow accumulation. So the risk isn't just AGI, it's runaway coordination and capability drift beyond human oversight. What about regulation? Schmidt is optimistic about regulation in the West, thanks to legal accountability, safety institute, and pressure from civil society. As my viewers know, unfortunately, I'm not so optimistic, and I've explained why. But he draws a sharp contrast. Once open source models and weights are released, which has been happening with more frequency lately, they spread instantly to China, Russia, and North Korea. These systems weren't built to harm, but they can be misused instantly. And we've seen that before with facial recognition used for surveillance in these countries. But let's be real, facial recognition is happening for example, in the UK, I spoke with someone from there just a week or two ago who told me that's why they moved to the US, because the UK now features constant surveillance. In the next part of the interview, he talked about trust, verification, and AI checking AI. Schmidt says the future of safety isn't just human oversight, it's AI policing AI. Models will soon become so complex that only another model will be able to probe and audit what it knows. That makes a lot of sense to me. As he puts it, trust but verify and use AI to do the verifying. And I just did a video recently about humans doing this policing, but it will soon be AI policing AI. Meanwhile, he echoes Fei-Fei Li's concern, and Fei-Fei Li, as my viewers know, is the godmother of AI, one of the godmothers of AI. Universities are getting outspent and outpaced. The private sector is pouring billions into compute, 
see video before last, while the public sector and academia are being left behind. In the next part of the interview, he talks about U.S. versus China cooperation or competition. Schmidt lays it out clearly. China is about two years behind the U.S. in generative AI. Now, he said this several months ago, and that is not the case anymore. That's how quickly that changed. Why did it change? Their biggest bottleneck? Lack of access to top-tier chips due to U.S. export controls. On that See video after next coming. The delay is temporary, not permanent, he said. And again, this is a few months ago, and that has changed already. What's more dangerous, Smith argues, is the asymmetry in how AI will be used, meaning how it's used differently in the two countries. In China, it will be used for censorship and party state control, clearly. In the U.S., open access and the proliferation problem, meaning more and more and more models. This is why Schmidt and the late Henry Kissinger pushed for a high-level East-West AI dialogue, a track to informal alliance to avoid AI surprises, especially regarding warfare and bioweapons. See last week's videos on the bioweapons issue. Part 6, The Real Long-Term Danger. Schmidt warns that the ultimate threat is recursive self-improvement. This is how it gets to superintelligence, where agents run thousands of reasoning loops and evolve faster than we can track. Add agent-to-agent communication and you get systems that may pursue goals we never intended and don't understand. He argues for a global safety structure like biosafety levels in biology. So that does exist. There are safety controls to prevent bioweapons being created and being released. And even predicts we may one day house top-tier AI systems in military bases protected like nuclear weapons. That may be possible. So how does he wrap it up, the interview? We're not just racing towards smarter machines, Smith says. We're heading into a world we may not be able to explain, control, or shut down. Watch the Terminator movies. (laughs) So the question isn't when AI takes off. It already has. It's past the inflection point, as I've talked about numerous times. The question is, will we shape it or will it shape us? And this has a critical impact on you because out of control AI improvement will lead to faster and faster automation of the entire economy. This is why, as I've repeatedly urged you, you need to pick career paths that are relatively technology resistant so that you can work as long as possible until there is no work like that anymore. This is coming by most of the people creating this stuff, say 2040. This guy is psychic because he gave this interview a few months ago, and already some of the things he predicted have come to pass. So we're committed here at the AI Guide to bringing you more and more of these interviews. So please subscribe for weekly breakdowns on AI risks, strategy and opportunity, and how it affects your career, and how to stay human in this age of intelligence. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.